This is the tutorial on pulmonary venous anomalies. It's quite a complex topic, uh, but I'll try and keep it uh, short and as simple as I can. Right. So, this is the view of the heart as if you were looking from the back, your back of your chest. So, you see that that's the left atria. Into the right, left atria, you can see the pulmonary veins draining. So, you have uh, the right pulmonary veins draining there, and your left pulmonary veins draining there. So, you have four pulmonary veins draining to the left atria. So this is the normal connection. So obviously if there's anything wrong with this and if these pulmonary veins are not draining into the left atria, we get an anomalous pulmonary venous drainage of connection. Now if you have none of these four coming in, if none of these four veins are coming into the left atria, then you get something called total anomalous pulmonary venous connection or TAPVC some people would call it TAPVR where the R stands for return let's assume that the two of them comes in normally and two of them goes and drain elsewhere that will give rise to something called partial anomalous pulmonary venous connection now the third abnormality you can which can go wrong with the pulmonary venous connection is stenosis so for example if this pulmonary venous is pulmonary vein is coming and joining here and if the entry is stenosed so that's pulmonary vein stenosis so that can ha happen and core triatriatum is a part of that stenotic connections now let's look at the embryolo embryology in now let's look at the embryology in a bit of a detail so this is your lung bud this is your splanchanic plexus this is your heart this is at about 29 days now a few days further ahead you can see from the splanchanic plexus, you can see a common pulmonary vein has developed. This is your right lung bud and this is your left lung bud. So this will develop into the right lung and that will develop into the left lung. Now a few uh, days further ahead, another week further ahead, you can see that the pulmonary veins are forming. Pulmonary veins are forming. At this stage, there's just one common, at this stage, there's just one common pulmonary veins draining into the left atria. A few more days further ahead by term you can see that uh, the common pulmonary vein has uh, given way to separate four separate pulmonary veins as I showed you in the first picture. So you can see that anything can, anything can go wrong in this embryology which can lead to total or partial normal pulmonary venous drainage. Now if you have an early atresia in the circulation coming back if you have an early atresia on the left side, you would end up with something like this. So the pulmonary venous return coming from the left lung would go and drain into the systemic vein over here. So that's draining anomalously. So that would come and eventually drain into the superior vena cava to the left innominate vein. So, at, but the right one you can see is draining normally. So if you have an early atresia, it will lead to, if you have an early atresia on one side, it will lead to partial anomalous pulmonary venous connection. Now if you have an early atresia of the common pulmonary vein, we can see that that connection doesn't come into joint to the left atria. That will instead form a collecting chamber over there which will drain anomalously into the systemic circulation through a vertical vein over here. So you can see normally you don't have this. So this normal connection over here is interrupted instead it will go through this vertical vein into the systemic venous circulation and eventually it will drain into the right atria so that will give rise to what you call as the supracardiac TAPVD now the third scenario is where uh, everything is going fine but you can see there is a severe obstruction or narrowing of the entry there is a severe obstruction or narrowing of the entry side of the left atria so this chamber, this common chamber will uh, dilate and look like a third atria and this condition is called co triatriatum where you have your right atria, your left atria and this chamber which looks like a third atria. Now the classification of uh, defects uh, if you have just one pulmonary vein, as drain, pulmonary vein draining anomalously into the right atria but the rest of them are draining normally you would call them a sinus venosus defect as they are mostly associated with an ASD. So just to draw you a picture to give you an idea so this would be your normally you would have your four pulmonary veins draining into the left atria so this is your left atria you have your four pulmonary veins draining normally instead what you would end up with is 
one of the pulmonary veins going into the right atria. So that will obviously come with a hole there. So that's called a sinus venosus type of ASD which is associated with one of the pulmonary veins coming into the right atria. So that's called the sinus venosus defect. We already talked about the partial anomalous pulmonary venous connection where out of this four pulmonary veins one or more of them one or more of them will join anomalously into the right side so that's called partial anomalous pulmonary venous drainage if all four of them are joining abnormally into the right side it's called total anomalous pulmonary venous connection we al al also talked about co triatriatum where the four pulmonary veins are joining normally into the left atria but the entry into the left atria this is the left atria the entry into the left atria is narrow so that entry of the common pulmonary vein into the left atria is narrow so that's called co triatriatum in addition to this you can get stenosis of the individual pulmonary veins so you have the four pulmonary veins there and one or more of them can be stenosed it's quite different from co triatriatum the last type of abnormality is abnormal number of pulmonary veins normally you just have four but you could have uh, more or less for example you could have three coming from back from each side so that will give rise to six you might just have one from one side and two from the other side so those are abnormalities in numbers now let's look about look at the total anomalous total anomalous pulmonary venous connection so all the four pulmonary veins drain directly or indirectly into the right atria. It's a rare complex congenital heart disease. Now the classification is quite simple. So if you think about uh, the pulmonary veins, so you have your, uh, let's say this is your right atria, this is your left atria, right? So if the pulmonary veins are joining like that, at the top of the heart, it's called supracardiac. If it's draining into the coronary sinus over here, that's called cardiac. If it's draining into the inferior vena cava, it's called infracardiac. So supracardiac, cardiac, infracardiac. You can also have a combination of these two, which would be type 4. So that's type 1 to 4, uh, and it's called Darling's classification. There is a simpler classification, which is Sim Smith's classification, which says it's just supracardiac or infracardiac. Infracardiac because the course is so long, it's almost always obstructed. So it's obstructed type and unobstructed type. That's a simpler class classification. This one is uh, the Burroughs and Edwards classification is based on how long the anomalous vein is, long, intermediate, and short. It's not very commonly used. The most commonly used one is the Darling's classification right at the top. So this is your. Uh, supracardiac you can see the pulmonary veins the anomalous pulmonary veins are joining into a chamber right behind the heart so this is not inside the heart this is behind the heart and from there it goes through a vertical vein into the innominate and into the superior vena cava and into the right heart so all the good blood which is oxygenated and coming back from the lung is coming back into the right side the only way life can be sustained is through a patent for Amana Vale here. So that will shunt from the right atria to the left atria. So that's your obligatory right to left shunt, which is necessary to sustain life in a total normal pulmonary venous connection. Let's look at infradiaphragmatic type, where all these uh, four veins are joining through this long vertical vein going all the way down and joins a portal vein. And you can see that. Um, because it's quite a narrow system here it's very likely to be obstructed which will give rise to back pressure in the lung and uh, these infants can be very sick so again uh, life will depend on two things the level of obstruction if it is severe the infant will be very sick if it's not obstructed infant won't be very sick and it comes back into the right atria through the inferior vena cava and from there that's an obligatory right to sh left shunt through the patent for Amana Vale. If there's no big enough PFO, then this infant would be very sick and in real danger. So this is a third type or cardiac type where the horizontal, so the common chamber opens directly 
into the right atria through the coronary sinus so it's a short uh, quite a short circuit there and then obviously to sustain life it comes through the patent foramen ovale into the left side so a mixed type in this case is illustrated darling's classification number four where you have the a common pulmonary vein sorry the anomalous pulmonary veins draining into partly into the coronary sinus so in this particular example you have the right pulmonary veins draining into the coronary sinus into the right atria and the left pulmonary veins draining anomalously into the left uh, into the innominate into the superior vena cava and into the right atria so they're all coming into the right atria but half of them through the coronary sinus and half of them through the uh, superior vena cava so that's a mixed type of TAPVD so as I said, uh, if it's infracardiac, they may very likely to be obstructed because the course is really long and goes through the portal vein. Also, there's some ductal tissue around there in ductus venosus which constrict. So uh, that can be obstructed. Supracardiac and coronary sinus uh, type are unlikely to be uh, obstructed, but uh, the possibility is still there. So uh, we shouldn't rule them out even if it is uh, infracardiac. Uh, Sorry, even if it is supracardiac or uh, cardiac. Intracardiac, again, the connection through the portal vein, the ductus venosus, penetration through the diaphragm is all going to be narrow and very, very likely to be obstructed. So in a TAPVD without obstruction, as you said, uh, as we said earlier in uh, the cardiac or supracardiac, so you know that the saturations are going to be really good. The oxygenated blood coming back from the left atria comes into the right atria and it goes into the left atria across the patent foramen ovale. So as long as there is uh, uh, a patent foramen ovale and as long as there is an obstruction, they are going to so saturate really well. So if you, uh, after birth, there are two different scenarios. So the one where the pulmonary venous return is severely obstructed, like in the infradiaphragmatic one, the pulmonary blood flow is reduced because there is no so uh, there's no flow into the pulmonary system and the oxygenation uh, will uh, fall down rapidly and the baby would be quite blue. In an obstructed type, uh, it's another problem. You have uh, excess uh, blood flow into the pulmonary circulation and they behave like a large VSD, for example, or a large ASD causing uh, high saturation and pulmonary edema. So as I said earlier, the, the role of patient foramen ovale is critical. Without patent foramen ovale, uh, a baby with uh, total normal pulmonary venous uh, drainage uh, uh, cannot survive. So the natural history of disease is as follows. So they, most of the patients who are unobstructed, uh, they are asymptomatic at birth. But majority of them would become symptomatic within a few days of life. Uh, if there is excess uh, blood flow, they would uh, uh, fail within the first six months of life. The one with the severe obstruction would uh, present very quickly and they would be very cyanosed and blue. So let's look at some examples now. So this is an x-ray of an infant with uh, supracardiac TAPVD. You can see that uh, uh, you can see that there's quite a lot of shadow at the right, uh, right at the top of the heart. This is because obviously you have your normally you would have your iota and pulmonary artery. In addition to this, uh, you're having the vertical vein going up and then you have your dilated uh, left innominate vein your superior vena cava is quite dilated and you also have your uh, um, venous collecting chamber behind the left atria so all these make uh, the top of the heart uh, really widened so that bit is really widened there it's almost a shadow on top of the heart shadow so we call it snowman and sto snowstorm appearance uh, sometimes it's pretty uh, easy to see. So if you see this appearance uh, in, a, in the context of a child with uh, TAPVD, it's very likely that uh, uh, it's a supracardiac type of TAPVD. When you do uh, an echocardiogram, you can see the what we are trying to find out is the uh, to is to delineate the anatomy of the pulmonary veins returning anomalously. Uh, so you have to look for, when you are doing the echocardiogram, you have to look for uh, dilated SVC. You would see copious blood return through the superior vena cava in the supracardiac type. In the coronary sinus type, you will see excess blood flow coming through the coronary sinus. You would fail to see the pulmonary veins draining normally into the left atria. 
So this is an echo picture of uh, the pulmonary veins draining. You can see the pulmonary veins draining there. So this is called the crab view. So those of you who do echocardiogram would uh, understand that uh, this can be either obtained uh, uh, from the suprasternal position or from the parasternal short axis position with uh, some adjustment of the probe. And you can see the blood coming back in here. So this is your uh, superior vena cava. So the left innominate would drain to the superior vena cava. And if when you look at the left atria, the left atria is small. It's, uh, and the right atria is massive compared to the left atria. So that's another thing to look out for. So when you see a very small left atria and a small left ventricle and dilated right side, think about TAPVD. So this is another example where it's draining into the coronary sinus. So this is the right atria here and this is the coronary sinus. You don't normally see this dilated. So if you're seeing it this dilated, for those who do echocardiograms, you would understand, you would uh, pick it up straight away because it would look uh, um, very bright and quite widened. But another situation where you would get this is a left-sided SVC. So if you can see normal pulmonary veins, uh, and then seeing extra flow into the coronary sinus, it might be just a left SVC in the coronary sinus. So another example, uh, this is a subcostal view. You can see uh, the common chamber here. And this is your right atria. So this is an diaphragmatic type of TAPVD. And you can see uh, the anomalous flow there. So for those of you who scan babies, uh, always use color Doppler over the liver, over the abdomen in the long axis view subcostally to see if there is abnormal, abnormal flow there when you're suspecting TAPVD. It's quite useful that way. Make sure that you put a scale down so that uh, you pick this up. So the princ principles of treatment are very uh, straightforward. When you have obstruction, you need to uh, treat them straight away. Um, there is a there is when there is no obstruction you can actually wait for a few weeks to even months if uh, if you need to some people would argue that uh, there is a role for prostin especially in the one uh, which are intradiaphragmatic as uh, some people would argue that uh, there is some ductal tissue in the portal vein which would uh, relax the portal vein and decrease the obstruction but i'm not entirely convinced with this myself so uh, the treatment is very simple in most of the cases, especially if it is uh, supracardiac or cardiac. Um, it's quite uh, simple. It's uh, simply de-roofing uh, the collecting chamber into the left atria, especially if it's right behind the left atria. It's quite literally quite easy. You could just literally de-roof the left atria into the. You could literally de-roof the uh, confluence into the left atria. But it's not always easy in the case of mixed type and infradiaphragmatic type, and it can be quite challenging. So coming to partial anomalous pulmonary venous connection now. So you can have the pulmonary veins connecting anywhere. So you can have the right pulmonary veins connecting to the SVC, right pulmonary vein connecting to the IVC, left pulmonary vein to IVC, left pulmonary vein to the left innominate, left pulmonary vein to the coronary sinus. Literally any combination is possible. So it's much more common and very often you won't pick these up in infancy at all and they would be quite well as infants. One uh, very, very popular and well-known type of uh, PAPVC is something called Shimitar syndrome where you have partial anomalous pulmonary venous connection on the, of the right side into the inferior vena cava. It's also associated with a small right lung and anomalous uh, arterial supply to the right lung. The anomalous vein would often appear like a scimitar which is a Turkish sword on the x-ray and hence the name. So you can see the anomalous vein draining anomalously into the inferior vena cava. They present with recurrent chest infection. When you do the x-ray you would see the heart is a little bit uh, to the right. You would see the right lung is hyperplastic. Not very typical in this case but in this case you have the typical scimitar. It's associated with a few other conditions as you would know. Um, with other heart disease like ASD, tetralogy, PDA, it's associated with the genitourinary tract abnormalities, vertebral, no vertebral anomalies and bronchiectasis. They usually present with the recurrent chest infections and can be, it can be quite late by the time we pick it up. 
So this is an example of a scimitar syndrome. That's an MRI scan there showing the anomalous uh, venous drainage from uh, the right lung going straight into the inferior vena cava. So that's your IVC that's going into the right atria over there. So that's your anomalous pulmonary vein. So it's quite an interesting, um, it's quite an interesting uh, thing. When you're doing an echocardiogram in these conditions, you would uh, typically see an overloaded uh, right ventricle, and you would you would al always wonder there's no atrial septal defect or anything to cause it. So when you're seeing an overloaded right ventricle, think about uh, PAPVD or scimitar syndrome. Uh, do an X-ray, and if you're not sure, request an CT or uh, MRI to confirm the diagnosis. That, as it can be quite difficult, especially if you've got a uh, um, uh, a big size adult and the windows are quite poor. Now to uh, finish the talk, we would just talk of, talk about sinus venosus defect. So sinus venosus defect, we know that uh, you have your uh, uh, one of your pulmonary veins draining anomalously into your uh, uh, right side so all the rest will be draining normally so this one's draining into the right side so it's commonly the right upper pulmonary vein draining into the right side and is usually associated with a sinus venosus defect right which is an atrial septal defect right at the top of the atria uh, so the treatment is uh, surgically you have to close the defect and you have to reroute the pulmonary vein the anomalous pulmonary vein into the left back into the left atria and uh, um, the prognosis is really good with it. Thank you for listening. I know this has been quite a uh, uh, complicated uh, talk but I hope uh, this was useful.